A teardown of the Samsung Galaxy camera. It's coming up right here on XDA Developers TV. <laughs> here. Now, not too long ago, I started doing something called an XDA unboxing, where I did the unboxing and then the teardown at the same time. Well, I realized that this was kind of confusing because a lot of people didn't understand what an XDA unboxing was. So, today, we're going to do a teardown on the Galaxy camera. So, let's get started. And we can turn this right back off. Now we can remove the battery and the SD card. And let's take out these screws. We have a hidden screw right here, which we can remove the cover with a needle, as well as a hidden screw right here, 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 and now we can finish removing the screws. One more hidden screw here. And let's just take another look around for extra screws. And I believe that's all of them. Uh, so we're going to start with a guitar pick to separate the front from the back, and then we'll move to a case opener tool. And this edge right here, as you can see, it has these additional little hooks right there, so it is a little bit more difficult to get off than the bottom side is, which does not have those hooks. We'll remove this tape here and here. And now we can disconnect the camera and the controller. Now we can remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws to separate the board from the chassis. Now we can disconnect the power button, the microphone, and the controls. Now the board should just lift out at this point. Now let's go ahead and remove this shielding here. And here's a close up of the board for you guys. Now of course we're not going to delve into the camera parts. Uh, the reason being is that there's sensitive optics in there. And as soon as you begin ex exposing these optics to dust, they'll never quite work the same again. It should only be done in a clean room, which this is somewhat clean, but it's not clean enough to take apart optics. Here is the LCD display. Now this LCD display along with this basically makes up a standard Galaxy S3 uh, approximate to the i9300. This is the Exynos processor of course and it is using a package on package design. Let's see if we can look closely at this. Alright so here you can see this is the Exynos chip and there are several resistors around this chip and each of these resistors is about the size of a needle. I believe these resistors right here, right below the needle, are the XOM resistors and these resistors control the boot mode of the device. Now my goal for a future hack will be to get this device to boot off of SD card and that will enable you to load Odin mode which will then be able to flash the device with firmware. So that's a project coming up soon. As usual, Samsung's build quality is very good and you can see here there are impact zones around all the corners of the device which keep the device from misshaping upon an impact and keeps components from popping off. However, this back panel on the device is made of a very sturdy aluminum. So I don't believe that 
this board will actually receive any impact. As you can see, the flex cable usage is very minimized in this device. This uh, camera here has some motors and moving pieces in it, which may or may not cause the device to flex. And so I would say this use of flex cable here is very appropriate in this condition. The rest of the cables are all a high grade connector, as you can see there. They've used these high grade connectors across the board to connect to the peripheral devices which this device uses. The system on a chip is using a package on package design with the Exynos on top. I'm not sure what chip is below the Exynos chip and this would appear to be the EMMC if I'm not mistaken. There is a connection here for hooking up to an external antenna however it ends up being right around the area where the lanyard is connected on the device. So it's, I don't know how practical that is but it is an option if you're looking to hack a little bit more signal out of the device. Now being that this is an Exynos 4412 device I would expect to be able to hook up a 416 ohm resistor between pins 4 and 5 on the USB port and be able to get UART from the data plus and data minus pins. Also I would expect to find somewhere on this board there will be UART output at a lower level coming directly from the processor before the USB chip is initialized. So I'll be looking for that sometime in the future. Alright so while I was reassembling this device first off a couple of notes. This device is pretty darn difficult to get back together. All the tolerances are very small and the alignment just has to be just right for everything to go in. These connections right here were pretty tricky. Now the other thing I wanted to note is there's a spare connector right here which typically on Samsung devices would be the JTAG port. However we already know that JTAG is locked down on this device so this port right here will likely be useful for UART as well. We'll take a look at that sometime in the future. I'd have to say this camera is kind of difficult to get assembled back properly. Uh, there was a lot of little pieces and parts and a lot of extra screws, so I wouldn't try this at home. However, I would like to note that this device is pretty darn well built, but of course that's expected from Samsung. Got any cool hacks you'd like to see featured on the show? Use hashtag HackOn. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and add me to your circles on Google+. Go to plus.adamoutler.com. Until next time, hack on.